Hey guys, we are back with some more New York Islanders franchise mode, and we are at the draft now, but before we get into it, let's check out, first of all, the draft board to see where we stand. So, I mean, here's all of our watch listed players. One guy I'm really interested in, Christian Ragnarsson of the, uh, of Schleftia in the SHL, because strength competition is, a, is an A+, plus, and he's got that A for shooting, and his only weakness is reach. And he's currently ranked 12th, and we have the 12th overall pick. So if Ragnarsson is still available at 12, I think I would want to take him. I mean, the projected picks are saying Suzuki, Chubarov, and Glebov, but I don't know, man. We we don't have anything on Chubarov or Glebov or Suzuki, so when it comes down to it, I think I would rather take Ragnarsson just because we know, especially with that strength of competition, being an A+, plus and we know that his shooting is already an A, I mean, that's that's pretty solid. So, and then we do have a weakness at forward in terms of prospects, so Ragnarsson would definitely be a good pick. So, let us go to the draft class to see all the prospects, and I believe there was an elite goalie prospect we were looking at who was supposed to go in, like, the third round or something. Yeah, Hutchinson. He's supposed to go 78th overall, so if we could pick up... I mean, I know we have one second-round pick, but we do not have a pick after that until the fifth round. So if we could... I mean, Hutchinson, he's going to be a little bit of a project. He's got those C for reflexes, C- minus for puck control, C for athletic. So, I mean, he's going to take a little bit to develop, but I, that being said... Uh, he is an elite potential goalie, so and we need one of those. So even if it's just for value, I think Hutchinson would be a good pickup. Uh, and then, I mean, we don't really have much on O'Mara here. Pff, I mean, if he's still on the board when we get to our second round pick, we might take him, but he doesn't have the greatest save percentage. Only four wins in 13 games played against C- minus competition so I don't know I think I'm feeling Hutchinson because we know at least we know he's a medium elite whereas with Omara he might be like a low elite or something you know so uh, let us get into the draft here and remember the most important thing for this draft is to <laughs> trade Clutterbuck, Komarov, and Lad because those contracts are insane and we'll be an anchor on this team if we do not trade them so let's actually, let's add the trading block here real quick. Let's put those four on there. And actually, Komarov and Ladder are already there. So that's good. We'll add Clutterbuck. Do it forwards. And there you go. So hopefully we can uh, get some form of return for these guys. I mean, I, I'm not expecting much, but, you know, even if it's like a, a fourth round pick, you know, I'd be fine with that. So as long as we're getting these contracts off the books... So let's just make sure that we do indeed. Yes, we do have the 12th overall pick. So let's go one by one here. I mean, even though we're not going to be able to see the information on the majority of these players, Jack Hughes does indeed go first overall to the Avalanche. Let's see who Anaheim takes. They will take Bo Meester. Kind of consensus, consensus one and two there. Capo Caco goes to the Canadians. Vegas takes Peyton Krebs. Chicago will take Kirby Doc. Winnipeg will take Vukuhevich. <laughs> Again, I'm probably butchering that, but Bone Byram goes to Vancouver. Calgary will take Cozens. New York will take Rita. Philly will take Tuminen. Minnesota will take Powell. So Ragnarsson is still available. And he is indeed the top prospect available according to Central Scouting. So the draft has pretty much gone as expected so far. And I, I don't see any reason not to take Ragnarsson, honestly. Uh, unless, like, someone down here that I'm missing. I don't think so, though, because, you know, these guys are all down there. And Ragnarsson's played against A-plus competition, and he had eight goals, 47 games, A, a for shooting already. His strengths are goal scoring, a good release, and he has offensive instincts, so we know for sure that he's a sniper here. And his only weakness is reach. So, 
and he's he, I mean similar style Theo Fleury. So I again I see no reason not to take Ragnarsson, and the goalie that we wanted isn't going till isn't supposed to go anyway until the third round. So let us take Christian Ragnarsson as the newest New York Islander. All right, let's just sim the next user pick here since we do have a second round pick, but after that we have to consider what we want to do. And pff, should I just make a trade now? Because I, I knew I wasn't going to get a first round pick for Clutterbuck, Ladder, Komarov, but we might be able to get a second here, depending. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's start out with Komarov. Now we are wasting a little bit of time here, so I'm going to go rather fast with this. Calgary, let's see uh, if we can even just pick up a third for next year. Uh, 50 players, geez. Okay, uh, let's see, let's see. Any open spots? Florida. Get it a, a fourth and a third for next year. Would that do it? Rejected. Even just a fourth. All right, perfect. Again, we're just trying to unload the salary here. So uh, I'm not really looking for equal value in return. So there's Komarov. And then Lad. Let's see what we could get for him. Uh, Minnesota. They have cap. They have a open roster spot as well. So let's see if we can get... Uh, if we could pick up a second for Lad. I don't think so. No, there's no way. <laughs> yeah, why, why I think that? Uh, maybe a third? Possibly? No? Okay. Uh, maybe... Uh, if, I don't want two fists. I'll take... Maybe, uh, maybe a third for next year. That probably has more value, though. Yeah, no. All right, we'll go I'll go a fourth for next year. There you go. Let's see. Accepted. There you go. Lads out of the way, and now we'll trade Clutterbuck. Uh, where are you? Where are you? Right there, all the way at the bottom. <laughs> Minnesota, no. Uh, maybe, maybe Nashville. Take Clutterbuck here. They got quite a bit of cap. Uh, if I could get a third, I don't think so, but we'll try it anyway. Rejected, okay. I'll get a fourth, I guess, for this year. Maybe two fourths if possible. Doubt it though. Yeah, I'll get a fourth for this year. Really, okay. We'll try fifth <laughs> for next year. Stock up, stock up on picks, really? Okay. I'll try, I mean, if I could even get a sixth for this guy, that'd be great. Wow. Yeah, they really don't like that contract. If I can't get even get a seventh here, then we're just going to have to deal with Clutterbuck, I suppose. Proposed trade? Yeah. I mean, I, maybe if I retain some of his salary, but I don't know. Like, maybe uh, if I retain like that much and just got a seventh for him. Let's see. Reject. Okay. Yep. Yep. We're not going to be able to trade Clutterbuck, so that's unfortunate. So, oh my. Yeah. <laughs> Call a timeout. I, I almost forgot about the time limit there. Good thing there's a such thing as timeouts. Now, is that franchise goaltender here? No, I do not believe he is. I don't see him. Okay, so we know that... That elite goaltender. Yeah, Hutchinson is still here. Uh, Ottoson, I mean, he's playing against A-plus competition, but he only has seven games played, and he does look like a, like a lot of a project there, so I think I'm going to avoid him for right now. Matula, Sasha Matula. Uh, C-minus playing the WHL. Now, where is Hutchinson playing? U Central U.S., so C-minus competition. I mean... Again, it's kind of hard to pass up that medium elite, especially when it's completely accurate. So I'm going to take Jason Hutchinson here with our second round pick because we do not have a third and we we don't have a fourth either. So I'm not passing this guy up. I'm going to get all the value I can out of this draft. So welcome to New York, Jason Hutchinson. And I don't believe there's any trades that we really can make after Komarov and Ladd. I mean, we could technically trade someone like Letty or Bailey or Everly even with one year left on his deal. Or actually, no, that actually, 
that's an expiring one year deal, so we can't trade Everly, unfortunately. But maybe someone like Letty or Bailey. Um, I think I would rather wait until free agency though to trade Letty someone like Letty or Bailey. Because we have a lot of time to trade them. And it's not like they're these guys are gonna be dropping off either. So so yeah, there's no point in trading them right now. We can take our time with those two. It's just we needed to get Komarov, Vlad, and Clutterbuck out of the way, but you know, Clutterbuck is obviously not happening. So <laughs> we're gonna have to keep his salary. But you know what? Two out of three isn't bad. And at least Clutterbuck's salary isn't, you know, the worst. So I, I think we could deal with Clutterbuck's contract for the next couple of years here. So let's see. Autosin is the next guy on the list. Let's see if there's any top sixes here. No. Okay. So Tag Bertuzzi is apparently a bust. Let's check out gems and bust here. There's only one bust here. We're, we don't see any gems, apparently, according to our scouts. So we'll go by our scouts ranking now. So where is the best apparently? Yeah, there's not really a whole lot to go off of now after those first two rounds because we're now in the fifth round. Uh, I guess, uh, you know what? Whatever, I'll take a chance on Audison because it's now, again, it's now the fifth round. So it's not like we're losing too much. And he, he, he again, again, did have a strength of competition of A+. Plus. So, he is playing against adults there, so, you know, we can at least give him a shot, even if it's just for trade value, you know, so, Autoson, welcome to the New York Islanders. Now, the 6th and 7th round picks, I have a feeling, are going to be complete shots in the dark here. <laughs> Let's take a look here. Uh, so, Palat, or Pavlat. I mean, he's got those Bs for reflexes, puck control, and athletic categories. He doesn't have any weaknesses either, but he doesn't have any games played. So, is that worth it? I mean, he's a backup, but he could be a solid backup. Because there's not really any good potentials left, to be honest. I mean, we'll, we'll sort by potential once again. I mean, there's Budgel here, Brett Budgel. Playing against C minus competition, only four goals in twenty eight games. Eh. Arabic, A for competition, no points in sixteen games. Could be pretty good though, because he's got that B minus for shooting and B for skating. Uh, I mean, he's gonna be a project for sure. What about Reed, Rylan Reed? Yeah, he's gonna be. Oh yeah, he's gonna take a while to develop there. Got those D minuses. I guess I'll just go with Harabic here. But he, uh, that being said, he is a low top nine taken consideration here. Uh, so I might just I might just take Budrill just for the value. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Again, we're just drafting for value here. We're not really... Uh, the, our scouts didn't really do us too well. Uh, oh, yeah, that was the fourth round pick that we had earlier. Because we're now in the sixth round. Okay, so, yeah, because we got that pick in the trade with either Ladder or Komarov, I forget which, but we'll just take Harabic now with this next pick, and then 7th rounder, again, just going to be a shot in the dark here, because we really have nothing to go off of. I guess for this next upcoming season, we should take a more hands-on approach with these scouts, because they don't appear to get everything done that we would need them to. Yeah, I mean, they're certainly good on their own for a little bit, but I especially I think towards the end of the season, we really need to take um, more control over the scouting just because uh, just, j even if it's just to get the top players, all the top players scouted, you know, just so we don't have any missing information if we're, you know, especially this early on in the GM mode when we're going to be more than likely picking in the top 10 for the next year or two. So, all right, I'll just... I'll just take Reed. <laughs> Rylan Reed. Welcome to New York. Sim the rest of the draft. Now, we don't even know how well we did with the draft here. I mean, we know we got a good player in Ragnarsson, but we don't necessarily know his overall just yet. So we're going to have to sign him and see how he plays in the preseason. 
So that's uh, I, I do like that feature. I really do. Uh, so the filing, following scouts have expiring contracts. Okay, yeah, whatever. We're going to take a look at the scout board to see if there's any better scouts anyway. Because the majority of the scouts that we signed last, uh, the beginning of the last season were like C potential anyway. So Kuanako doesn't want to re-sign. We're not going to force him to. You can just go to free agency, bud. Okay, so Bodie Wild does want to resign. That's good. Sislo, I'm just going to release you. Just uh, just get rid of all these pretty garbage players here. <laughs> so Salo, I mean, he's 20 years old. Medium top six. Where does he play? Bridgeport. Or no, no, no. Liga. 18 points. I mean, that's against... That's against... Uh, I would say A competition just because that's the top league in Finland. So, I mean, I'll give Salo a chance. I suppose. And Bodie Wild, I mean, he looks like he's pretty close here. I'm going to give him more than one year, though. I'll give him th a three year deal. So, this is, appears to be his official entry level contract. So, hopefully, he becomes an RFA after this. Wallstrom. Going to give you a three-year deal as well. But he is looking for the big two million here. <laughs> if we give him three years. So, you know what? I, never mind. I'll give him <laughs> I'll give him two years. And hope that he's an RFA after the season. Or uh, after the his contract's over, rather. So, there's Wallstrom. Fritz, I'm not going to bother re-signing you. Got that AHL potential. Lee and Eberle got to re-sign as well. But we'll go for these... Our phase first and we'll just release them if they have a bad potential which is like half of them so we'll just release these guys here Devin Taves Michael Del Cole 74 overall I mean yeah two-way we'll, we'll sign him Nelson Bovillier Hosang and Pulak are still uh, we still need to sign for the NHL unsigned let's see I mean you got Jenkins Budgel Arabic, Otterson, and Ragnarsson. We're going to sign Ragnarsson for sure because he's got that top six potential. And, uh, yeah, we know nothing else about him in terms of his individual attributes, so we'll sign him. Uh, let's see. So, I mean, Jenkins. Now he's got that bottom six. The only other guy to consider signing is Otterson. But, yeah, you know what? We'll, we'll, go. we'll sign him as well. He's 17. Can't hurt to give him a shot. You know, these guys will leave alone. Uh, Hutchinson, I will definitely sign. Even though it said on his report that he wasn't too great. You know, we'll we'll see what he is anyway. So there's all the unsigned players I want to sign. Now, Pulak. Four mil for two years. What did he do last year? 23 points in 55 games. I mean... That's not too bad, actually. 100 hits. Yeah, we'll resend Pulak. He was pretty solid. We'll give him 3.8 for two years. Ho Sang, up to an 81 overall. That's good. Uh, let's see his stats from last year. So in 82 games, he had 40 points. Pretty impressive. I'll give him a contract. Uh, three years. Pfft, he wants 4.6. He better get a jump this year. <laughs> Uh, we'll give him 4.4 for three years. Beauvillier, what did he do last year? 38 points. Yeah, I mean, again, we're, we we got to keep these young players here. So uh, two years for 2.9, sure. And then Nelson, 27 years of age, 21 points last year. What did he do in terms of hits? 79, I mean, he could have done better, especially... For our team, <laughs> where he's probably getting more time than he should. Um, I mean, yeah, I'll give him a one-year deal at 2.2. Give him another chance because, I mean, again, there's not really too much talent that we currently have to replace him with. So, we'll just re-sign him. But, yeah. Definitely got to keep an eye out for him this upcoming season. Everly and Lee definitely want to re-sign so, Eberle wants five years at 6.3. If I could give Eberle four years at maybe 
Yeah, we'll just go generally what he wants, 6.54 years. And then Lee, uh, he wants three years, 5.9. If I could give him, I'll give him four years as well. So just so he's on the same kind of deal as Eberly. And then if I could go six mil for him, that would be good as well. And we have the cap space for this. We certainly have the, the cap space. We got a little lad in Komarov, so I think we're fine for cap right now. Uh, for the time being, at least, uh, Leonard needs a contract. Now, his contract is going to be a little bit bigger than it was last year. It was only 1.5. However, Leonard did do pretty well for us last year. 917. Now, that doesn't look the greatest, but there were times of the season where he was pretty solid for us. So, even if we just re-sign him for trade bait, we're going to re-sign him here. I'll give him two years at 3.5. See if he re-signs for that. RFA is none for goaltenders. And I. it looks like we have everybody signed here, or at least have approached everybody, as yes, we have. So, we will back out and see how many players sign with us and see who might be getting released to free agency. So, Bodie Wild, Wallstrom. Everly, Leonard, Pulak, Hosang rejected, Nelson accepted, Lee, Beauvillier, Ducol, Sallow, Ragnarsson, Hutchinson, Ottoson, all accepted. So we really just, yeah, we just have to re-sign Josh Hosang at this point. So that's good. Most of them accepted. And even, even Hosang wants to re-sign. He just, we didn't give him the contract he wanted. So um, we'll give, yeah, we'll give him three years at... Yeah, 4.6. I mean, basically what he wants. I mean, we have the cap. We can afford that. One day. There you go. Okay. Definitely want to get Hosang back under contract, given the season he had last year on the third line. Now, I believe that's it. So let's just make sure that we have everybody. So RFAs. Yep, we're good. UFAs. Yep, we're good. Okay. Let's get to free agency. Actually, before, I was about to go into free agency, but before we do, I remembered we have to re-sign one of our scouts here. As yes, Cody Trainer for the OHL. He's got that B minus, so I will indeed re-sign him. And we have three more slots for scouts left. All right, so I was about to sign a new scout, but it turns out we cannot do that at this stage, which makes sense. You know, it's the re-sign stage, so we're going to just go ahead here as we have already approached our one scout that needed to be re-signed with a contract. So we're going to advance up to free agency here. We're just going to go a day at a time, and there he is, Cody Trainer. so we will now go to July 1st. All right, here we are, and uh, one thing I will point out before we get started in free agency Looks like EA patched this pretty quickly. You can now sort by defenseman, so good, good on EA for that. Uh, I, I don't know if it was uh, that was a patch or it was just a random glitch that was happening to me pretty often, but it seems to be fixed now, so that's good. So let's see who's in free agency now. I mean, I wouldn't imagine we're going to be doing too much. I mean, Tammy Panarin, Pavelski, Duchesne, Broussard, Pacioretty, Henrique, Gardner, Chara, Bowmeister. Gord, Petrovich, Heinen. So, I mean, we're in the position right now where I don't think I want to be making any big free agent signings unless it's a star defenseman. I mean, we do need that star winger to play with Barzell, but I don't know. I, I kind of prefer that top two defenseman before the, the uh, first line winger. Because we already have a lot of winger prospects. Not elite, of course. I mean, we have Ragnarsson. I mean, you also have Ottoson, who we don't know if he's an elite, though, yet. And we also have Bellows. We have uh, Wallstrom. And then you also have Hosang. But none of those guys are really elite, you know? But then when it comes to defensemen, you have Letty. But he's the only elite defenseman on this entire roster. You have Dobson, who's a 76. You have Wild, who's a 71. Both top four defensemen. But again, no elite prospect defensemen. And then as far as goaltenders go, you got Leonard, Grice, then Gibson, Soderstrom, and Hutchinson, who we know is a medium elite, but there's a good chance he is not that great overall-wise. 
So, um, I, I don't really know what I want to do going into free agency. I think what we should do is just avoid all the big free agents and just save the cap space because that's going to be valuable for us, I think, this season. And especially when it comes to resetting Burzell. I mean, his contract, I don't believe, is up until next year. But let me just make sure on that, actually, because it has been, what, two years in the NHL now for him? Yeah. Ooh, okay. You know what? I might want to just get this out of the way right now while I can. So offer contract extension. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. He wants a raise. So we could literally just offer him eight years for the meaning pretty much the rest of the GM mode. Uh, it is only, we've only passed year one though, so his contract would, would expire after year nine. So, do I want to give him a bridge deal is the question. I think so, just so that we're going to be able to retain him for the rest of the GM mode. So if I give him, what, two years, he should still be an RFA? Yeah, he should still be an RFA after two years. So, I mean, he'll be... Only be 24 at that point. We'll get him at 7 point... Yeah, 7.6. I mean, that's a hefty <laughs> bridge deal right there. But, uh, you know what? If it means keeping Burzell for the remainder of the GM mode, I am okay with that. Now, that is eating up a lot of cap space. So, again, that cap space is going to be very valuable for us. Uh, especially with the contracts that we were not able to trade of Clutterbuck going until 2022-2023. Um, Aho, Martin, yeah, I'm not going to take care of those contracts right now. There's just, there's no point. And then, as far as everyone else goes, yeah, I mean, Brazil is the only contract I really wanted to take care of there. So we got him. I'm pretty sure we have him locked up anyway, long term. There's no reason why he shouldn't sign, because he did want to re-sign after all at this point. So... In terms of free agents, again, I don't think there's really... I mean, we do have $21 million for this year, but as of next year, that'll go down to like $13 million with Burzell's contract, you know? So, uh, again, there's no one here that really would fit into our age range. I would be looking for someone who's under 26, and all these guys, 27, 34, 28, 31, 30, 29, 28, 42... For Chara, 35, 27 for Gord, 27 Petrovich. Uh, I mean, Duclair, Anthony Duclair is an interesting one. 23 years old and he's a UFA. Uh, he, he looks pretty solid. I mean, we don't have him scouted all the way. He's making point, <laughs> he's making 700,000 last year. And we scouted him on, what was it, the second line. So I would imagine he's pretty good. He's got that top six medium potential, but we don't know if that's for sure. So let's actually take a look at his stats from last year. 29 points. How many minutes per game? 12.51. So uh, it doesn't appear like he was playing power play at the very least. Yeah, no, he was definitely not on the power play for whatever team he was on. 19 hits. He's not that physical. Let's see, uh, the... Takeaway and giveaway ratio is good, though. Would du would banking on Duclair be worth it here? Because he did have 17 goals last year. That's pretty significant. So, he, you know what? He's within the age range. He's a UFA. We have the salary cap, at least for this year. So, I don't see why... I don't see why not, personally. We'll give him 4.1 for two years. I'm not going to overextend on him too much because again we don't know if that's an exact overall there and as a matter of fact it's probably not his overall he's probably more like an 82 or an 81 even but you know at least you know we're getting a younger player in there who could potentially step up to be a sol at the very least a solid third line scorer for us so I think that's the only real big free agency move I want to make here uh, oh goodness, Mike Smith, 88 overall apparently, uh, but, but again, that's not exact for him. Uh, could we use a backup goaltender? No, we already have we already have goaltending in terms of Leonard and 
what's his name? Uh, what's our backup's name? <laughs> Let's see. Grice, right. So, again, there's not much I want to do. I guess at this point, we're just going to be waiting for Burzell and Duclair, and then we'll make some, we'll make like one signing to fill out the rest of the cap for whatever we need. So we'll go to the sixth here. We'll see if these guys sign. And there's Duclair. So he's extremely happy about our offer. So I'd imagine we kind of overpaid him a little bit. Um, Barzell accepted very nice. So that's that out of the way. Let's see how much salary cap we have left for this year. It should be around 17 mil. Yeah, 18.5. So we're going to have to make a, a signing here. Uh, I'll, I'll sign a defenseman just so we have a extra guy Bortozo, Moro, Dachin, Sharat, Ruedel. I mean, I'll just sign a depth guy here, Josh Georges. Why not? I mean, we're just gonna be filling out the cap anyway, uh, but not for that much. <laughs> I'll take him to five mil. Again, just so we have some breathing room in both directions here. So, 4 mil, and then we'll go up to 5 mil. Man, EA, why don't you put in the uh, <laughs> the typing pad for this like you have for, for HUT? It's, it would make it so much easier <laughs> to just, to just uh, get to the number I want to get to. So, yeah, let's, let's advance days here. I mean, I, would I wouldn't imagine why we won't get Josh Georges here. As a fill-in player. There you go. Okay, so again, that's about it in terms of off-season moves, I think. Well, at least in terms of free agents. I don't think we're done, however, making trades. Though, do I want to make a trade now or later? I think I would rather wait until preseason. At least until we see generally who's on the prospects board, so we know... If there's a prospect that we, uh, at a position that we know we need, like a winger or a defenseman, then we know whether we want we would want to try to make a push for the playoffs, or if we want to do worse, try to tank for the best pick possible. So, yeah, I, I'm not going to do anything else here in free agency, uh, unless, unless we might be able to, yeah, I, I would imagine at this point we would be able to sign some more scouts, which we can. So I'm, I'm glad I thought of that. So let's see what's going on here. We have some B overalls with Ariel Campbell for the AHL. Uh, these are all AHL scouts actually for the, for at least in terms of B overalls. Uh, do we need AHL scouts? I mean, we, I know we have AHL scouts, but how the, yeah, I mean, yeah, we have some, we have a lot of C scouts here, so I'll sign these AHL scouts here just to make our professional scouting as good as it can get. So Ariel Campbell, there you go, and Mila Schubert. Man, this is going pretty slow. <laughs> and then Joaquin Walsh. Yeah, I mean, all these, all these scouts are pretty solid. So, Joaquin Walsh, there you go. There's your contract, and yeah, that's, that's all the signings I'll make for the AHL. NHL, is there any better scouts? There's Heather Ronning. Do we have any B-minus NHL scouts? No. We have one, two, three Cs. And we have one B in Peterstrom. So uh, we'll go after a few NHL scouts here as well. I think it'd be specifically Heather Ronning, though, just because of her A pluses for the NHL. So there you go. And I, I mean, none of these, it's not like any of these other scouts would be would be an upgrade to our current NHL scouts because they're all C's, you know, besides Heather Ronning. So yeah, that'll be about it for NHL. And in terms of juniors, I would, or, uh, well, <laughs> in terms of 
amateur players. I'd like to get another USA scout if possible because we only had two of them last year and we only have 17 scouts on us. So we, we would obviously be firing our AHL scouts that we're, we're replacing. No one in Europe, Scandinavia, no one here either, Russia, no one here. Okay, so clearly the only amateur scout upgrade that we'd be getting is a third USA scout, just so we have all of USA covered. So I'm going to fire all the, or the majority of the AHL scouts at least, besides, <laughs> why not, Strumbolopolis, we'll hold on to him. He looks like, I mean, I, I'm just, honestly, I'm just holding him onto him for the name. <laughs> we'll fire all the rest of these guys here. Presuming we get the other scouts, which, again, I don't see why we wouldn't. So let's see here. Advance a few days. There's Mila Schubert. There's Joaquin Walsh. Heather Ronning decided to go to another team. Ah, okay. So we lost out on one, and that was that was the NHL scout as well. Ariel Campbell has signed, and I believe that was it. So it's a good thing I, it's a good thing I didn't fire any of our NHL scouts, and it's a good thing we got all the AHL scouts signed. So we have two on the central. Uh, how's Strumbleopolis at? at other AHL division? I mean, he's pretty good at all of them. So we'll send, uh, let's see, the Atlantic Central Pacific. We'll send this guy to the north. Okay, we can't do that right now. But just remember, Strumbleopolis will be going to AHL North. So we have the AHL covered. NHL, I mean, that's as good as it's going to get for right now. So we'll leave that alone. And then we have 17 scouts. So I, again, I'd like to get another USA scout. And I'd like to get maybe one more European scout and maybe a Russia scout. USA, Hoyles, Walter Hoyles, yeah, I mean, he looks solid, only 33 years of age as well, I mean, we, it might be beneficial to offer these, <laughs> these scouts a little bit more money, especially in the free agency stage here, we'll get a European guy, Stefan F Feichel, uh, we'll, we'll increase his salary a little bit, just to make sure that we get him, I mean, he's not too good you know okay so we should probably the the scouts we should probably be offering more money to are the b scouts which is probably where we messed up with heather ronning and let's see russia yeah, yeah that's the other one denisov i mean wait, wait. he has a b minus for russia artem denisov so i'm you know what i'm not even gonna sign this guy so we'll just go with the one usa scout and the one european scout so that should be good, and then we can finally get through to year number two. So we'll simulate a few days here. There's Walter Hoyles, and there's Stefan Feichel. So, so we will now get through to the start of year number two. All right, so here we are in year number two, right before the preseason, and there's actually no offseason jump in this game as you have to make sure, or you have to scout the players at first in the preseason to get an update on their overall. So we have actually, we still don't know what the overall of Duclair is, and we don't know the new overall of guys like Matt Barzell, and we don't know the new overall of Josh Hosang. We don't know the new overall of really any of these players, of Dobson, Wallstrom, because we haven't seen them play since last year. So, uh, Del Cole, 74. Yeah, I mean, we have no... No information on any of these players, and let's just make sure everyone who we want up here for the start of the preseason is playing, so that would be mainly prospects. Let's get Soderstrom and Hutchinson up here. We'll send Leonard and Grice down. Yeah, and then defensively, we have Dobson up here already. We need Wild, and I'll call up Sallow as well. We'll send out Helgeson, Aho, and Mayfield. There you go. That's already, I mean, that's like eight defensemen. So I'll send out Georges and Pelic as well. There you go. Forwards. Let's see. You got a bunch of these guys. Wallstrom's already up here. We'll call up Del Cole, Bellows, and Ragnarsson. We'll also call up Otterson. I'll send down Martin. 
Nelson, and Clutterbuck. And then I will call up Autoson and send down, let's see, we'll send down Beauvillier. All right, there you go. So now let's see the preseason lines before we end things off here. So that would, the computer's saying Lee, Barzell, Eberly, and notice how all these players are at three, are at the, uh, the third option there being semi-accurate. We don't know the exact overall of these players yet. So Lee, Barzell, Eberly, Bailey, Sezikis, Hosang, Ducole, Duclair, Wallstrom, and then Ottoson, Bellows, and Ragnarsson. I'm going to put Wallstrom with Burzell again, and then Everly would be with... I'm going to say we'll put Duclair on the second line. How is he at face-offs? I mean, we don't know exactly. Obviously, we'll put Bailey in the middle, so Duclair will be on the wing. And then, let's see, Hosang with, I'll say, Ragnarsson. I'll try him. I mean, we'll, we'll just use him at his natural position. So, Ragnarsson, right wing, third line. And then, Ottoson, Bellows, and Sezikis would be the fourth line. Yeah, that looks good. Defensively, Letty, Pulak, Dobson, Hickey, Sallow, and Wild. I'm going to have a rookie on each line. So, I guess Dobson would be on the first pair. Then, Wild, and then Sallow. Sallow's a lefty. Uh, yeah, that looks good. And we actually have <laughs> we actually have three righties and three lefties, so that's uh, that's good. And then goaltender wise, we have Soderstrom and then Hutchinson. I want to see Hutchinson play the first preseason game. And yeah, that'll be about it for this one. And in the next one, we will get into a preseason game with your New York Islanders, and we will hopefully start the beginning of year number two. See you guys then.